Iowa State wins on the road in Cincinnati to claim sole place of second, winning 30-10 to 10 on the road. I mean, man, if, if Iowa State fans, if you'd asked us how we were doing a, a month ago in this same state, boy, I, how things have changed. How a completely 360 of, of the season so far. Iowa State now wins two in a row. Uh, they get a Big 12 road win. They are now 3-1 and one in conference play. Thanks to Texas taking a week off. They're giving us the second place uh, since they are now, I think, 2-1 and one on the season. And, and West Virginia losing on a Hail Mary Thursday night as well. A lot of things to go into. Um, the term complimentary football has been getting tossed around with this team ever since I mean, last week, I don't think you could say the Oklahoma State game was complimentary football. I think the defense struggled too much. But really, the last two wins have been well-rounded football from, from every aspect. You could talk about the special teams this week with Jalen Nolan taking off kickoff returns. You could talk about the defense and, and John Heacock and getting this team right and the dominating performance they put on in the second half and really getting after Emory Jones. And then, I mean, what can we say about offense? I mean, a lot of guys... Coming into their own, you're seeing a lot of different pieces. There's some flashes from certain guys where you could see it uh, from the early Campbell era. I I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but there are some guys where you're like, you're you're wondering who's putting on that jersey this time. Uh, let's start with the offense first because I think it's worth noting. Okay, let's let's talk about in particular Rocco Beck. You have to start up start off with your your freshman quarterback in this situation. A guy seven games in continues to get better week after week, and this road test was was no different. I mean, you could say this was almost a a trap spot for Iowa State, and now I know they weren't favored, um, but th they were five point underdogs kind of for a reason. I think Vegas saw an opportunity for Cincinnati coming off the bye week uh, to really get right. And this game, homecoming, Iowa State's coming off the Jack Trice legacy game where they played awesome uh, and got a great win against TCU. And like, this is where this is where good teams win football games, and that's what stood out to me. Iowa State didn't let all the distractions get to them, and they go on the road and really physically dominated that football game. But Rocco Beck continues to get better week after week, and you're seeing a lot of trust from that coaching staff put into put into Rocco. I mean. How far have we came from from week two against Iowa where they made that kid throw his 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 clock, his internal clock was like maybe a second and a half. Uh, and he couldn't throw longer than like seven yards on average. It, it was quick outs, just get the ball out of his hands. And I understand, like I, I understand why they do it. And he is getting better. He's a freshman. And like a freshman quarterback, his second game of the of his career against a Phil Parker defense in Iowa. Like, of course, that's the game plan was great going into that. Like I, I wouldn't expect anything differently in that situation, but it's just really awesome to see Shieldhouse and Campbell kind of adapt to Rocco's playing style. And as we get into this Big 12 slate, as we continue on and we're playing honestly lesser defenses, they're letting it t let him turn out a little bit. Um, they're letting him get out of the pocket, use his legs. I thought he used his legs really well. This was a that was a spot where Iowa State desperately needed. Hunter Deckers to thrive last year. Just sometimes plays aren't there and you just got to take the two or three yards and scramble and take what you can get. I thought Rocco did a phenomenal job of that. And that sometimes goes unnoticed. Now let's talk about the run game. Uh, this is a group that takes massive strides week after week. I mean, from unable to get two yards of carry on Ohio to now, I think we can say we have a running back one with this group. And some people may disagree with me, but I like... Eli Sanders, man, and when he's healthy, and that's a big if because this he just he's a guy that gets banged up a lot of that position. But man, sixteen carries for fifty two yards, not a great game, but he's a guy we can consistently get the ball. Unsure with what the Abu Sama situation was, I think he's a little banged up from what we've heard. He's a little banged up. I think they're going to use the bye week to get him right. But even when he comes back, I like Sanders being the number one guy. I think Abu Sama has huge playmaking potential. But as a freshman, like let the veteran, and I say veteran lightly because this is a super young running back room, but let the veteran Sanders get your carries when you get deeper, when the when the weather gets colder, when the conference games start strengthening up here, 
give him the ball at a consistent basis and find a number one guy. That's that's so important because this offensive line is taking strides. As they start letting the ball loose and throw the ball with Beck, the offensive line's getting more comfortable in the run game where they don't feel like all the pressure's on them to run block because we have no passing game. Now we have a passing game. It's starting to develop. Now we need to find a number one back that we can rely on. I think Sanders is your guy going forward. Uh, but while the tight ends had a great game, and I, I really want to highlight those guys, like Klotz got a touchdown, Dean played well. Um, ben Bramer continues to really impress me. He's He might be my favorite guy on that offense so far because I think he's got unlimited potential, um, that, especially that tight end spot on Shieldhouse's offense. But this is the Jaden Higgins game, man. Like This was what we expected out of Higgins from – Uh, fall camp like this was it what everybody was talking about this is what everybody was hyping up he's got the size he showed off his speed he looked like dare I say Xavier Hutchinson out there today and I think he's got that frame to be Hutchinson now I think Hutchinson I don't want to get it in over my head he's got an uh, he had an unlimited range where he caught almost anything but Higgins is a really nice number one option for this team especially going to the new big 12 next year uh six catches 172 yards and the biggest play, I think, was like on that 10 yard out where he caught it from Beck and turned it into like 50 yards. That was phenomenal. As Beck continues to get better, he's always going to have his tight ends. Like, I think he can rely on Klotz, Bramer, and Dean to, to catch passes for him, but he's going to need a legit receiving threat. And we've seen Daniel Jackson get involved. We've seen Jalen Knoll have a couple of nice games. And Higgins had a good game against Ohio and a couple of other spots, but we need a guy that's going to get five catches every single game. And I'm hoping that this was the breakout game Jaden Higgins needed to get comfortable because he's going to have plenty of opportunities against very mediocre defenses coming up here in the next few weeks. Let's move to the defensive side of the ball quick. J.R. Singleton uh, stands out to me, man. I don't know if Dominic Orange is is necessarily hurt or banged up, um, but even if he was benched for Singleton. I think Singleton earned the nod. Uh, and that's not as light to Dominic Orange. I, I want to see that guy on the field as much as I can. But J.R. Singleton is is playing really, really well, man. And let's not even talk about like benching. Let's just say I think these two complement each other really, really well. Like if these two can play on a consistent basis, like splitting the snaps 60 to 40, that is the piece in the middle that John Heacock needs for this defense to continue to grow and thrive because if they can get a consistent push from the inside, guy after guy, like if they're cycling in and maybe Orange plays first and third down, Singleton plays second down or whatever the case may be, that's going to keep them fresh going into the fourth quarter and they can get stops when they need them, when these games get close. And like I said, when that when that weather gets colder as, as fall is, is approaching here in the state of Iowa, and then a couple of other new faces on defense I want to highlight. Zach Levette from from uh, Missouri. He keeps continues to get more snaps as we're moving on. He's, he's fast. I think the linebackers need speed. Uh, this was probably one of the poorer groups on the defense or on the whole team in general, to be honest with you. Uh, not a complete slight on, on, the, on the that group. I think they just are young, and they're trying to find their pieces. He, Zach is finding his spot on that team. I think he he's a nice transfer portal. Uh, piece to that defense and then Ike Iziagu like when he can rush with that size at the defensive end position another young guy who is a highly touted basketball player coming out of high school he gives on Yedem's on Tyler on Yedem breaks that he desperately needs like I talked about it internally early in the season the defensive line lacked depth they were playing three guys basically the entire game that's why we couldn't get pressure on Ohio or Oklahoma or who you name it, even Cade McNamara and Iowa. Like we need depth so we can continue to put in guys in position in the fourth quarter and not be worn down from playing 60 to 70 plus snaps. Ike is an awesome piece at the two deep JR or Dominic. Like it's a one, two punch. He, these guys continue to complement each other. I think that's the biggest thing for me is is as we get throughout the season, when D-line gets more depth, I think that's where Iowa State's really going to get back to where they were of old with John Haycock and really slowing down any good offense we played. Now let's talk about it quickly. Iowa State's got a bye week, but 
three very winnable games approach them soon with a trip to Waco in two weeks uh, to take on Baylor, Kansas at home. Jalen Daniels hasn't played in three weeks. Man, I don't. You got to think a back injury just doesn't go away. You never know if is he even going to come back this season. And then you have at BYU after that, and BYU just got stomped at home against a TCU team. Iowa State handled okay. So three, I don't want to say they're all winnable games. You got to just say two and one is the goal, right? Like you're looking at a lot of bowl projections. I still don't see Iowa State on a lot of listings. Athlon, CBS Sports, those are two that I kind of take serious for for their projections. And they don't, respectively, like they don't have Iowa State. And I don't know if I necessarily blame them right now. There's still a lot of work to be done. But this is a group right now heading into the bye week. You couldn't ask for a better spot, man. Everybody healthy. Sama, maybe Orange, depending on his status. Some other guys. Um, and you have a red hot team going into the bye week and there's a trip to Waco against, I think the worst big 12 team outside of the new faces outside of your Cincinnati's UCF BYU. I think Baylor is the worst big 12 team of the original 10. So very winnable game. Uh, if the offense defense and special teams continue to complement each other like they are right now, man, <laughs> who's to say this team can't. Can't win seven, can't win eight games. Kansas State just got a brand new freshman quarterback. So there's a lot left on the table for this football team. We're going to see how it goes on. We will tackle the Baylor game next week. For then, uh, Cyclone fans, let's enjoy the little winning streak and enjoy your bye week. And as always, go Cyclones.